Hi, I'm Michelle the Irritable Vegan. I'm here to share my vegan low FODMAP journey and hopefully take some of the BS out of IBS. Now today I'd like to share with you some pantry staples and recipes for using up whatever you have to hand. Now I'm going to try and make these tips as general as possible so that they apply to every vegan low FODMAP kitchen whenever you might be watching this but I also want to make it specific enough that it's going to be of some real help to you during these very unusual times that we find ourselves in. Now before we begin I just want to say that in no way am I encouraging you to rush out and buy everything that I'm going to show you today. Rather, what I want you to do is think about experimenting with possibly the things that you find at the back of your cupboard that you may not have had the confidence to use before or that you may not be overly familiar with and also to come up with maybe some new ways of using up ingredients that you may find yourself needing to cook with day after day after day. Practically everything that you see here today are items that I already had in stock. And that's just due to the nature of the types of videos that I make here on YouTube and also to my normal eating preferences. I didn't purposely go out and buy any of these things solely with the intention of making this video. And everything I'm going to show you today are things that I use on a weekly, if not a daily basis. I last visited my local Aldi just over a week ago and I have to say they were fantastically well stocked and I really do think they're doing a marvellous job. Here in the UK, we've had some strict measures put in place to avoid the likelihood of people panic buying. And I, for one, am genuinely really grateful for, for those measures, even though they came a little bit too late, in my opinion. So please make sure that wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, you're taking advice from your local government and you're acting accordingly. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Before we get started, I just want to explain a little bit more about how this mini-series is going to work. This was originally filmed as one video but ended up being way too long, so I decided to break it up into sections. Each section will feature different types of pantry staples with low FODMAP tips and recipe ideas for how to make the best of them. I'm hoping to release one section per day for the next week, so by the end of the week we'll in effect have an entire pantry staple tour broken down into sections. By doing it this way, it's going to be much easier for you to find the section that applies to the ingredients that you have available. Now because this was intended to be one video, each section will feature the same intro and outro and that's because each section in the series needs to work as a standalone video. Because some people may only ever watch one episode, it all needs to make sense. If you'll be watching more than one video in the series, and I really hope that you do, I'll pop a timestamp in the description box so that once you've seen the intro on the first video, you can skip straight to the content on the rest. The only thing that you do need to know is that the video clips playing over this part of the intro will change depending on what we're talking about. So if you prefer seeing some visual inspiration for recipes, you might still want to watch this part. As the series progresses, make sure that you check the description box because as each video releases, I'll be leaving a link to it below. And also the recipes, videos and resources that are linked to will change to reflect the ingredients featured each day. I hope all that makes sense and I really hope you find this series helpful. And now, let's get into it. So now we're moving on to the flavourings. Now it's quite interesting because although this is not an essential category of foods that you really should have on hand at this minute, it will make all of the difference to your cooking and eating over the next few weeks. It's really no good having your pantry stocked full of pulses, rice and pasta if you're going to be eating them plain. So although these are not really considered essential foods, in some cases they really are because they're what's going to help you enjoy the essential foods that you do have in stock. Now to begin with I'd always go for dried herbs and this is a simple selection here. I've got thyme, rosemary and oregano. My thyme's nearly out there. I've used up the last of my dried basil. Uh, so that would be something I would be looking to replace at some point in the future, it's not essential. But as long as you've got some dried herbs on hand, obviously you can buy them it mixed. Uh, mixed dried herbs are very popular here in the UK and they are typically just a mixture of herbs. I know sometimes the Italian seasonings do have other things in there, possibly like garlic 
onion and peppers but generally if you can find herbs you look, I'd look to either supply a small quantity of individual herbs or some mixed dried herbs. In terms of spices I'm never without a five spice so something like that actually contains cinnamon, fennel, star anise, black pepper and cloves all of that in one little jar. Again something like a garam masala this is coriander, cumin, cassia, ginger, black pepper and cloves. So again, that you've got all those different spices just in one pinch of this. A FODMAP safe curry powder, uh, obviously without the use of garlic. Uh, but one thing to bear in mind is that these blends are probably going to be sold out quicker than the individual spices. Just because they're easier, they're more convenient. And particularly for people that are having to learn to cook from scratch which are not used to doing it before then it's much easier to have something pre-blended than it is to begin blending your own so these are the ones that are likely to sell out quickest so if you don't have access to these types of blends then just a very small selection of one or two herbs and one or two spices is really going to serve you well Something like a low FODMAP stock powder is essential for getting flavour into lots and lots of meals. I've got lots and lots of different videos on this channel. Uh, one's a homemade low FODMAP stock powder, I've got a curry powder, I've got sauces, I've got pre-made spice blends which suit different types of meals please do make sure you take a look at those they are all in my stay home stay safe playlist which i'll leave a link to down below my pantry is also never without asafoetida that should be in every low fodnapper's pantry it's a fantastic alternative to garlic and onions it's got a really pungent allium aroma and it really does lift dishes it's particularly good in things like curries and very strongly flavoured savoury dishes and also smoked paprika which I think helps to give a really meaty robust flavour to, to whatever it is you're cooking so I've always got those two on hand in my pantry something else that I find quite essential is um, acidic ingredients so I always have balsamic vinegar and apple cider vinegar and if at all possible you need to make sure that you're buying that with the mother you may not be able to see that but it's basically the cloudy solution at the bottom and that way you know that it's raw it's unfiltered it's unpasteurized it really is the best best quality vinegar obviously adds an acidic touch it can add quite a lot of body to a dish I regularly use vinegar to deglaze the pan if I'm frying in water rather than oil. If I'm doing a water saute, then I will use a few splashes of vinegar. I often use vinegar if I don't have any wine in for cooking. So I quite often use balsamic vinegar in the place of red wine. I do have a white wine vinegar as well or I'll use an apple cider vinegar in place of a white wine. You really don't need much but especially if you put it in at the sauté stage just to help deglaze the pan it really does get loads and loads of flavour into your food. Uh, something else acidic we've touched on before is a tomato puree. You only need a really tiny amount of that. I think two tablespoons of that is considered low FODMAP. Two tablespoons of that in any meal is going to give you a really, really deep flavour and that can be really easy to easily diluted with lots of water, lots of stock and you'll still end up with a really, really flavourful broth. Another flavour that I like to consider is salt or umami. So one of the ways I get that into dishes is with soy sauce. Now obviously not everybody can tolerate soy sauce, so whatever soy sauce to alternative you usually have, whether that be tamari or coconut aminos, it's a really good way of getting some depth, some salt and some umaminess into your dishes. Speaking of umami, I've always got a jar of this on the go. Now, um, in the Monash app, there's only Vegemite that's actually been tested in there. And I think it's either one to two teaspoons of that is considered safe. I've been using the supermarket own brand, which is basically a thick yeast extract paste 
for a very long time and, and not had any ill effects from it. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you won't, but it's just something to bear in mind if you can't get hold of the branded Vegemite. But again, this has got a really rich umami and I think a really meaty flavour. Uh, so that's really good in savoury dishes, soups, stews, broths, that kind of thing. You only need a really small amount. It does last a really long time and it does give a really, really big boost of flavour. I actually really like to drink this. I put a teaspoon of that in hot water, mix it up really, really well and have it as a really nice, soothing hot drink. Staying with the yeast and umami. Every vegan's favourite is the nutritional yeast flakes. Uh, I was buying these from Aldi for quite a long time. They had quite a good selection of these in. I don't think you can get them from there anymore, so I probably will go back to buying them online. Luckily, these are the kind of thing I buy in bulk, so I do have several of these still available to me. And this obviously gives a really, really deep cheesy flavour to a lot of sauces. It's fantastic in scrambled tofu, makes a really, really authentic scrambled egg. I like to blitz it up with, with, uh, with a firm tofu and make almost like a, a mayonnaise or like an egg-based uh, bechamel sauce. Um, so that is a really, really nice ingredient to have. It is low FODMAP, I think one to two tablespoons possibly. It is also a sauce of B12. Again, with the acidic flavours, I always tend to have mustard on hand. My go-to is always Dijon mustard, but I think most mustards have a low FODMAP safe serving, and that can just add a little bit of a kick to sauces. The only thing that I don't have here, which I would suggest getting hold of if you can, is either a bottled lemon or a bottled lime juice. Obviously, if you can get hold of the fresh limes and lemons, then they would be a good thing to have. But again, they can really lift soups and sauces, just give them that little bit of kick. Uh, quite often, if you, if you taste the sauce and you're not quite sure what it's missing, it's either going to be missing acid or umami. So sometimes if, if, you, if you taste something and you just think it feels a little bit heavy, then just a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice will just lift it. So uh, currently I don't have any of the bottle variety, but that would be something that's really good to have on hand. Um, they do tend to last a really, really long time. Obviously they'd last much longer than fresh lemons or limes. Now just with this small selection here, I'm perfectly happy that if I had nothing else in my cupboards, just using a variety of these, no matter what I'm cooking, I would be able to get a really, really good flavour in there. So if you're the type of person who's starting from scratch, you're a little bit worried about, about stocking up on things that you may not necessarily use, you really don't need a lot to make a big difference to your cooking. And if you're the type of person that buys really random herbs and spices, uses them once, puts them to the back of the cupboard and forgets about them, now would be a really good time to dig all those out and figure out the best ways to use them in your cooking. Make sure they don't go to waste. A lot of these things will last an incredibly long time if they're stored correctly. So it's probably worth digging out some of those herbs and spices that you never usually get around to using and see how you can add them into your meals. So finally, onto the last category of foods, we've got the snack items. Now we're all grown-ups here, we're all fully aware that these are not considered essential food items and that we'll be perfectly able to survive without them. But the reality is that many of us are probably going to be doing a lot more snacking at the moment than we would usually. Now that can be because we're stress eating, we're comfort eating, we're eating out of boredom, or just because we've got better access to them at the minute. Now, the way that I always tackle this, not just in a quarantine isolation situation, but generally is that I only buy the stuff that I'm actually happy to eat. There is no point stocking your shelves absolutely chock full of sugary, salty, sweet, moorish, fatty snacks that are gonna leave you with a bigger sense of regret than they do with the sense of comfort you get from eating them. So the best thing to do is to stock up on the snacks that you really are happy to eat and that you don't mind indulging in. So some ideas for snacks include things like rice cakes, now these are really good, very simply with either uh, some peanut butter 
or some melted dark chocolate drizzled on them. I also particularly like them with sliced strawberries or sliced bananas. They've they're, uh, got quite a decent amount of protein in them, but they're not overly Moorish. They're not really the type of thing that you're going to sit down, particularly the plain ones. You're not going to sit down and you're not likely to eat the full packet, but they are just a really nice snack to have on hand. Another one for me is homemade popcorn. Now I much prefer savoury varieties, so I flavour this up with nutritional yeast, salt and freshly ground cracked black pepper and that's my favourite way to eat this. I've always got these on hand. If you do prefer them sweet then you could possibly add in some cinnamon, some maple syrup or even make just a very basic sugar syrup to coat them in. Um, but I would always have these and they have a really generous low FODMAP serving size. I think it's several cups. So, you know, you, you really can indulge on those and not feel too, too guilty about it. I've also always got some dark chocolate to hand. I do prefer the flavoured varieties. This is the Aldi Mosa Roth brand and they do several flavours. This is the mint. They also do a really nice salted variety, which it's quite hard to, to get hold of on a, on a normal week. And they do a chilli version. What I really like about these is that they come in individual packs. So they're already pre-portioned for you. So I think it's, it's quite unlikely that you're gonna eat several. I think that's quite a nice, it's quite a decent size. That is actually a low format portion size of 30 grams. And I think that, that you can have that amount, you know you've had it, you can really enjoy having had it. But if that was a full bar of chocolate where you had to break it off yourself and and decide yourself how much you're going to eat i think you're much more likely to eat more i know some people will have an issue with the extra packaging but for me i think that is a is a fabulous way of self-regulating your portions uh, another really nice snack to have on hand is some plain or low fodmap safe corn tortillas uh, they're really nice to snack on and they can obviously also be included as part of the main meal. So you could do like loaded nachos, you can make tortilla soup, you can crush them up and use them in place of breadcrumbs as a topping on something like a stew. Um, so that's something that I typically have on hand. I don't have any at the moment. I'm not gonna be rushing out to buy any, but I do like to keep them in when I'm able to. For all of these things, something that I tend to do quite a lot anyway, is if I've got a big value pack, a big family size bag of, of nachos, I will actually portion out one small bowl. I won't take the whole packet with me into the living room. Same with a cookie, a biscuit. I will take my portion out of the packet and purposely put the packet away and sit down with the portion that I've allowed myself. And that way I feel like I've had something, but I don't then risk mindlessly just reaching into the packet and, and finishing them all. So that might be a good tip if you do find that you're snacking a lot more than you're generally used to at the minute. That could also be a good tip, is, is to either put them up on a high shelf or put them away, just take out the portion that you're happy to eat at any one time. So there you have it. Now I've really tried to make sure that all of these tips apply to your vegan low FODMAP pantry whenever, wherever you're watching this from. But obviously at this moment in time, I really hope that these tips are gonna serve you well. Please take care of yourself and your family, buy only what you need and what you're realistically gonna use over the coming weeks. I think we can all agree that our retail workers at the minute are doing a hell of a job. Please let's not make their job any harder than it needs to be. I'm pretty certain that most of them would much rather be at home safe and sound with their loved ones. Please reach out to me in the comments below to share your tips with the rest of our little community and also to ask for any recipe advice, any meal ideas or inspiration that you may need. You can check out the other videos and playlists that I have available. I really think that some of them are going to be useful to you now and in the future. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!